Another thing which is required is to enforce prudent regulation and supervision. I mean, this is by means of incentives and deterrents. One of this is, of course, market mechanism. It must operate effectively to support the institutions that are really Islamic. Uh, if uh, the bank, uh, if the bank does not uh, operate well, does not, uh, uh, there is some cheating going on with respect to investment depositors then it will lose face and uh, will uh, go down in the future. Sharia Auditor's report must be, must be uh, announced in the newspapers so that uh, there is greater transparency as to what has gone on. <coughs> Sharia courts and banking tribunals, chambers of commerce, in case a, a firm cheats once, you may let it go. But if it cheats two or three times, then the chambers of commerce may blacklist that particular organization. And this will, of course, be another deterrent. So the first deterrent will be the publication of the Sharia audit report in the newspapers if there is cheating. And after that, if this is done again and again, it should uh, the chambers of commerce should black blacklist that organization, and this will serve as a deterrent. So there are ways of bringing about the same kind of of uh, institutional framework that existed in the past, but not in the same form. In the past, there was uh, social uh, disrepute ostracization and now this will be ostracization also but in a different way then enforce uh, okay the legal reform there has to be when we talk of uh, prudent regulation and supervision then we have to talk of also legal reform the, the Islam Islamic banking institutions are subject to laws which were prepared during the period when there was only conventional banking. Now these laws need to be, to be revised, uh, for instance like uh, treatment of interest and dividends. This is only one thing. There are so many other things where laws need to be revised. Effective corporate governance and uh, there should be better governance and greater transparency and uh, pro provide protection to depositors. This uh, protection can be provided through deposit insurance. This will be for only uh, demand depositors because they don't share in the, in the, in the return, therefore they uh, their deposits have to be fully protected. They should have voice in shareholders meeting and there should be depositors associations. In fact, they should have a voice not only in shareholders meetings but also in the board meetings and depositors associations. So these are some of the institutions that uh, need to be established for, for this purpose and the last of all resolve the unresolved fiqh issues. There are a number of areas where there is need uh, for uh, fiqh uh, verdicts like hedging. It has still not been accepted by a number of our uh, Sharia scholars. Uh, hedging is necessary in the transactions uh, these days because uh, take for instance exchange exchange rate during the days of the Prophet وسلم, there was uh, gold gold and silver coins were there and the ratio between these was one is to ten and this ratio remained stable throughout the Prophet's uh, life 
and it was also more or less stable during the Khulafa Rashidim. It fluctuated somewhat, but not significantly. But then it became uh, it fluctuated significantly in during the Mamluk period. It uh, was one is to fifty, and uh, that, that is why later on throughout the world this was a problem. That's why the bimetallic standard was abolished and gold standard took its place. Gold standard was able to stabilize exchange rates and uh, there were the fixed parity system brought about by the International Monetary Fund but this did not uh, continue. Now we are in a flu uh, fluctuating exchange rate standard. If the exchange rates keep on fluctuating, there has to be some way of protecting the, the traders or businessmen who deal in import and export. And uh, if there is no hedging, there can be a great deal of insecurity and uh, they, they can face uh, substantial losses. So hedging has to, has to be con considered by our Fukaha and uh, some sort of a, a mechanism created to, to protect uh, uh, the people. There are, there is another area, sale, uh, late, late settlement of financial obligations. This is also a big, uh, an important uh, issue and it is, uh, it has to be reconsidered by the FOPA to ensure that uh, the person who, uh, who purposely delays payment gets penalized. Sale of debt, this of course uh, has caused a lot of problems in the conventional financial system and maybe uh, it may not be, it will, it will certainly not be accepted by our Fukaha because of the religious ruling against the sale of debt and I, I would not uh, even consider that, uh, I mean would not advise them to consider it at the moment where this has become uh, so and come under such disrepute. So these are some of the important things, important challenges that the Islamic financial system faces and I hope uh, we will be able to resolve them uh, in the near future. I don't expect this to take place within the next uh, two, three years or so, but I, suppose, I hope within the next decade or so we should be able to resolve all these problems. Thank you. Now if you have any questions, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Amar Chapra. May Allah reward you, give you long life and good health. Um, may now uh, open the floor for the questions starting from Lebanon. Giving three questions maximum per, uh, per uh, place and, and then we'll see if we can have some, some more time. Starting with Lebanon, please. Yeah, uh, I have a uh, question, uh, please. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Dr. Shabra for uh, these lectures and uh, if allows me to express my opinion concerning the slice number two. Now you mentioned in the slice two under heading our vision that uh, the intention is not to change the conventional system. In my opinion, whether we like it or not, uh, the application of the Islamic system will eliminate the present conventional system for a wise reason, which is the two systems will never be met at the intersection point. And uh, besides, the reason that uh, prevent the acceleration of application of Islamic system is ourselves as Muslim countries are not applying this system so to give a good example to the other world. In addition, we, uh, when we try to apply uh, that system, we think from the beginning how to modify our uh, system in a way which let it goes uh, parallel to the conventional system which is totally wrong 
and would not service the system, uh, Islamic system. And uh, the best example is the process of uh, Murabaha and the uh, promise to, to buy contract, which is executed before the Murabaha contract, and most of the time the, the two contracts uh, uh, are done at the same time. And the other uh, example is uh, the fatwa about the dealing in shares with the companies based on the riba system and uh, also the process of Tawarok. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, this is, uh, this is our, our system and uh, should be applied as it is. So, whether this is, will affect badly the present system or not, like uh, Salat, so we don't uh, change the condition of Salat in order to let, uh, let it be suitable to the others. So that's a question. Thank you very much. From Lebanon? From Lebanon? Yes, that's a question. Thank you very much. Okay. You want to answer now? Yeah, okay. Then first... <coughs> Let me take the first uh, observation, which was that uh, changing the conventional system, we, another, we want to change the conventional system, but not just uh, for the sake of changing. We want to change the system to realize a vision. If we do not keep the vision in mind, then there is no point in changing the system. We, and uh, in other words, we do almost everything as it is in the conventional system and then call it Islamic. This is not our objective. So, when what I said is that we want to change the system in a real sense, not just because we want, it is not a nationalist feeling, like driving on the right or left. Uh, this, uh, this, is, this is a nationalist kind of an attitude. Uh, of course, now it uh, it cannot be changed because it has uh, gone uh, for a long time. Uh, initially, it was nationalist feeling which maintained it. Otherwise, the whole world would have uh, the same system going on the right-hand side and not on the left-hand side. So, this is not because of nationalism, but because of the vision. And our vision can be realized not through the conventional system, but only through the Islamic financial system. Tax system, I, I, I'm sorry, I could not uh, understand uh, what was uh, implied by the by uh, our brother. Uh, uh, he also raised the question of tawarruk. Well, of course, uh, uh, tawarruk uh, cannot be allowed. It is strange that some of our uh, uh, legal advisors have allowed tawarruk. By the way. For those of you who do not know what Tawarruq is, let me explain it. Uh, there are two words uh, used uh, in this sense. One is Ina and the other is Tawarruq. In Ina, if I uh, want uh, to raise cash, I go to somebody, to a, a merchant, and I tell him I want a hundred dollars, I want to borrow a hundred dollars. So he sells to me something for a hundred and ten dollars payable after one year and I sell it back to him for a hundred dollars in cash. So this is a, a, a hila used to indulge in interest. In other words, because Islam wants uh, debt uh, through uh, purchase and sale, so we, in, uh, we have this uh, purchase and sale transaction to avoid uh, the Sharia uh, prohibition of interest. So this, uh, this was not allowed by the Prophet, it was uh, uh, prohibited. But Tawarruq is different. Tawarruq uh, is between uh, not two parties, but within, uh, between three parties, without any of them knowing each other. I go to a merchant and buy something for a hundred and ten dollars payable after 
one year. But then I, of course, in the beginning, it is not my intention to sell it. I want to keep it for myself. But something happens, and I do. I am forced to sell it, or I don't need the object, and I want to sell it. So I go to some other person, and I sell it to him for say hundred dollars or ninety-five dollars, and I get this cash. This uh, this is tawarro, where the, there is no collusion between the parties, <coughs> particularly between the buyer and the seller. Uh, and and the person who wants to borrow money. 